and um, I am going to be starting a series of teaching today and um, the Wednesday living by the answer global service will of course take on a new impact from this Wednesday um, so you should um, prepare yourself as you are coming it's going to be a time of feasting on the word of God and not a time of excitement a time of education in the Holy Ghost by the Holy Spirit because it's preparing us for the days ahead is that okay remember on Sunday I said becoming what your future needs that's the teaching I did on Sunday I want you to get that message everybody because the biggest problem of people is not that um, they waste time is that they didn't become what they are supposed to become the future will come and when the future comes you must be ready for that future is that okay praise God so I'll be taking off on this teaching today and um, I've mentioned the subject a little bit but the Holy Spirit wants me to go into details just um, teaching on that subject and the broad theme of it is going to be grace faith and love love grace and faith so I will take them one by one and we see how far we go so write down the leading statement for this um, series if it is God so you can say that will be the that will be the topic if it is God is that okay so you can check if it is God right but if it is God it cannot be evil it cannot be bad it cannot be small it cannot be late and it cannot be slow if it is God so you can stop the topic on that if it is God right but then you continue it cannot be evil it cannot be bad it cannot be small it cannot be late it cannot be slow but most times those are the questions that confuse people if it is God if God is there why is this happening and things like that but God is always there God has not gone anywhere and is not going anywhere amen so I want you to get that statement and frame it in the photo gallery of your soul if it is God it can be evil so if something evil is happening it is not God if it is God it can be bad if it if something bad is happening it's not God it can be small if something small is happening and that is all that there is to it it is not God it can start small but it's not going to remain small is that okay so you must understand so I'm going to take time to um, do this teaching for you it can be late many times people assume that oh God is late there's no too late with God you remember that story of um, Jairus and his two sisters and Jairus, Lazarus, Lazarus that died you remember that Lazarus that died and then Mary said to Martha said to Jesus because Jesus met Martha first when he came as if you had been here my brother would not have died meaning you are too late and Jesus said well didn't I tell you if you believe you see the glory of God and then when he met Mary, Mary also said you know if you had been here my brother would not have died but then he said where have you laid him and then they brought him up so as far as God is concerned time is immaterial it is you and I that we deal with something that is too late or um, is slow is that okay now how do you now deal with this subject is what we are going to be looking at as we go into this subject do you get that huh? 
Amen. So get that clear. If it is God, it cannot be lesser than what you can do yourself. It cannot be lesser than what the devil will do for his people. It cannot be lesser than what man can do for you. It will always be better. If it is God. Did you get that? Amen. I hope you got that. I'm waiting for you to write it down so that I can be on the same page. You understand that? Amen. That is if naturally you can do something by yourself without prayer, without doing things. And then if God joins you, it must be better than that. Is that okay? If the devil does something for somebody serving the devil so well, and this is what the devil had done for that person, and um, you say God did something for you, it's lesser than that. No. I hope you got that clear. Now, when, when the devil is doing something for people, or if the devil is going to do something for you, there are three conditions you must meet. Okay? So get that clear. If, and if you get, if you will be a child of God and you get involved in this, uh, in the three conditions that the devil uses, number one, all right, okay. You have to sin. That's number one condition. You have to sin. Number two, you have to commit crime. Number three, you have to go into the occult. Did you get that? All right. Um, did you get that now? If you're a child of God, and you get involved in sin, crime, or the occult, then the devil will get involved with you. Is that okay? If you are not born again, and you don't get involved in any of these three, the devil will not get involved in your life in the sense of entering your life. He can oppose you, he can kill you, he can fight you, but he won't get involved. You understand what I'm saying? In the sense of, oh, you are into partnership with the devil but this thing we get a man in partnership with the devil did you get that it doesn't matter whether you are born again or not born again okay so now go over the point that i've said if it is god it cannot be lesser than what the devil will do for somebody that is living that is doing sin and you know what kind of sin is possible is that okay praise god for example if you're a christian woman now and um, you have another woman that you know who is a sinner and who decide to use bottom power you know bottom power is sin and decides to get promotion with bottom power now you don't have to feel that god fail you what it simply means is when god does his own things for you it will be better than what sin got that person did you get that good and then if someone decides to do something criminal and you think oh well you know i'm I, i'm cheating myself not doing what everybody is doing no when god does his own thing will be better than that do you get that and then occult occult simply means you go into a partnership with the devil you get that now occult will give you something bigger than what sin will give you what crime will give you do you understand that because you are actually engaging the devil in a partnership do you understand that so now if you are born again you are on the righteous side this person in occult is in partner is a partner with the devil now a child of god is supposed to be a partner with heaven let me say with heaven okay i will have said with god but I, I don't want to limit your thinking a child of god is in partnership with god now the problem is many christians are not actively working their partnership did you get what i'm saying when you enter into a partnership 
whether with a human being or with a spirit it's a legal arrangement that has conditions that has rights privileges consequences of violation and things they in fact they tell you if you if you go to bank now to open an account you enter into partnership with that particular bank and then they ask you to sign something and they say terms and conditions apply the same thing terms and conditions apply with our relationship with god so you must understand that but now the problem is people that have entered the partnership with the devil they respect their partnership with the devil more than christians respect their partnership with god i hope you're following what i'm saying i want to, i'm using language that you can easily understand okay and you can ask god you can argue your case as it were that why this and why that so now i'm just giving you this picture now okay that human beings that are not born again on this side all the people here are not born again there are people that are not born again that just are not ordinary sinner okay now a person may not even be sinning but just a religious person the only sin that is in his account is the original sin of adam you remember the book that we wrote original sin and personal sin the sin that takes everybody to hell is the sin of adam what determines your punishment in hell is your personal sin did you get what i'm saying so you don't assume that everybody will get equal punishment in hell just like in heaven everybody is not going to get equal blessing did you get what i'm saying what makes people go to heaven is not what you and i have done it's what jesus has done once you accept that one you qualify to go to heaven but after that one your obedience your sacrifice your contribution now determine what you are going to get you remember that bible talks of people getting crowns in heaven there are people that will get to heaven without any crown he just gets him by this king by, by, by the skin of his teeth all right because jesus has done something is that okay because adam had done something everybody is a sinner if you don't do anything extra you will go to hell if you never accepted jesus the sin that takes you to hell is the sin of adam did you get that it's not fornication that takes people to hell it is not telling lies that take people to hell it is the sin of adam that gave people a nature that is the nature of the devil do you get that now when you now tell lies you fornicate you do whatever it now determines the degree of punishment you will get in hell i hope you got that clear good now when you get born again it is not what you did that make you to go to heaven it is what jesus did now obedience to god doing what god said now we determine the degree of your enjoyment and reward in heaven is that very clear wave your hand if you are following me that's far. that's must very clear to you so everybody in, on this side now sin crime and occult those are the three areas that the devil get people into human beings into problem sin you do something wrong and all that and then not every sinner is a criminal how many of you know that some nice people are not criminals but is a sinner if i some people I, I remember when we preach in the, somewhere in lagos uh to dedicate the house of a very big man and then um, after we finish the dedication of the house there are all kind of big men there okay and this man happened to be a family member and one of his friends walked up to me after i finished praying and leading everybody and all that and he said to the host he said ah, you don't introduce me to the man of god you did ah, you didn't tell me that we you have a man of god around you like this ah. and he told me says me sir our case is said to <laughs> your case is not said to do <laughs> now he, he assumed that because he knows a man of god his case is said to <laughs> he's not said to with heaven <laughs> But that's, it's, just a, it's just a normal sinner. Do you get what I'm saying? He doesn't consider it anything wrong in a party that his wife is there to give a lady a scar to see him later. Are you following me? That is not breaking the law of Nigeria. You know, understand what I'm saying? How many of you remember when the American president, one president of America, I think Bill Clinton or something like that, that had an issue with, his, with a girl in the office? There are some Nigerian leaders that say, what is wrong with these Americans? Huh? A man is having a phone with second. You should just marry the girl and solve all this problem. <laughs> now that was what some people said. 
Now, in that society, they consider it very, very dangerous. But some people say, what is all this problem? I hope you are following what I'm saying. Good. So you must understand that crime has to do with the law of man. Okay, sin has to do with the law of God. Do you get that? There is something that is sinful to God, but it's not criminal to men. How many of you agree with that? Uh -huh. Good. For example, abortion is sinful to God, but in some societies, it's not a sin. Is that okay? It's not a crime. So you must understand, if you, if, if you are moving from place to place, you must know what is a sin and what is a crime. Is that okay? So you as a child of God must recognize that, that now sin, crime, and occult. Occult is where you enter into an active contract with the devil. I hope you are following me now. Good. Now, Christianity is entering an active covenant with God that you must service, understand, and activate and work in the terms and conditions. Did you get all that explanation now? Huh? Now, don't forget what brought us to all this explanation is the statement, if it is God, it cannot be lesser than what the devil will do for somebody that is using sin. It will not be lesser than what the devil will do for somebody that is using crime. And it will not be lesser than what the devil will do for somebody that is using occult. I hope you are following what I'm saying. Huh? Praise God. I, I remember telling a story, I hear a story, I, I remember many years ago, myself and a friend went to we were young, young, young chaps that time. Okay, the only thing that we had that time was a motorcycle that my friend rode. And then we, we had the calling of God. We had education, but we were obeying God. And so we, are, we did. They wanted to do something in the um, ministry of my friend. And so we went to meet this man. He was the wealthiest man in their, in, their, in, their, in their community, in their state, in their town. Okay, and so we got to his house and... Um, we dress well, shirt and trousers, we tie. We parked the, the, the motorcycle in front of his house. And then when the man came down and we presented our case, I wanted him to contribute money and things like that. And he listened and looked at us and looked and then said, do you think that's what that's how I make my money and whatever, make my money? just get out of my house. And we left. I hope you that is a, that maybe 15, close 20 years ago or 25 years ago. And then I had my friend, was, my friend was sharing testimony. That the grandson of that man, the man had died and gone now. The grandson of that man needed to go to school in the school of my friend, and they were coming to appeal to him for school fees. Just two generations after that. I hope what I'm saying. Now, what that tells me is that what God will do for you will be better than what the devil will do for anybody. But at that time, it looked like no, no condition is permanent. Write it down, don't forget, good or bad. It is you that you must govern the changes that take place in your life. Change is the only permanent experience that you are going to have on this planet. But you must determine whether the changes is positive or negative. And positive change or negative change is a direct function of your participation. I hope you understand that there are few changes that will take place that you don't have anything to do about it. But when change comes, your response to change is under your control. Wave your hand if you have followed me. So that statement, you must let it sink into your spirit. Because most times, it is because we don't have a grasp of truth settled in our heart that make us to question things. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, bro, are you only come? You led the song today, I, 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 you, you, you are one leading worship. All right, good. Two plus two is equal to five. That's a five. Now you are behind shared the new generation, now it, it's five. Huh? No. Pastor, you can come. Don't go yet. I said two plus two is equal to five. It's four, sir. Now you're analog. Two plus two is equal to five. It's four, sir. No. It's five. It's four, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I said it's five. 
Sforza. <laughs> now listen to what I'm doing here. Why are, they, why are they disagreeing? Because two plus two is equal to four is a truth that is established in their life. Are you listening to me? Question is, if it is God, it will be better than what the devil does for his people. Is it as much of a truth inside you as two plus two is equal to four? Until it becomes like that. You would think that the devil has something better than what God has. You would think that sin has something better than what God has. You would think that crime has something better than what God has. And because of that, you won't pay the price to experience the reward of truth. That's why some people felt tempted. I've never felt tempted. You can't come and tell me now to come and do juju for anything because I already know something better than that. There's nothing you're going to use to tempt me to go and commit sin or crime. Why? Because I already have something that is working better than that. I hope you're following what I'm saying. And I know that I know that I know that it is better. God will do better. But most Christians don't know that as a truth. They hear it in church on Sunday, excited, they clap, and they go back to their truth. Because what is truth in your life is what will control your response and behavior. Now you can go back now. I just, I'm using this example to get a point across now. I've not started my teaching. I am just clearing the ground and we are laying foundation. Is that okay? So that the, the thing I want to first settle in your heart is this truth. If it is God, it can be low, it can be lesser, it can be slow, it can be late, it can be bad, it can be evil. And these are the areas that people feel. Oh, God, God is late. God is not late. God is not a failure. Are you following what I'm saying? So you now settle down to find out why is that statement true? And why must you take that, take it to that statement? Is that okay? If it is God, it will always be better than all those other, than the one that you can do by yourself than the one that the devil can do for his people, that man can do for If there's someone that can bless you, that can do something for you, and he does it, and God says, I'm going to do something for you, you should expect something better than that. Did you get what I'm saying? Praise God. So how do we now come to that place to experience it? That's what we are going into the teaching for. But that's the truth that this teaching is built on. Did you get what I'm saying? Praise God. And then, if it is God, it will not discriminate between you and another child of God. If it is God, it won't discriminate. That is to say, um, Pastor Ibukunyu and Mr. Jiwale come. So if I gave him this, I gave you, and you are rejoicing, and he is angry. Both of them are children of God. This thing that I gave him, can he get it? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because these are truths that I want to establish for you. Okay? That if a child of God got something from God, any other child of God can get the same thing if he met the condition that he met. Do you agree with that? Wave your hand if you agree with that. All right, good. So it's not as if God gives, do something for one child of God and say, no, no, I'm not going to do it for you. Is that okay? Praise God. So why we come to church is to understand this truth. Did you get that? So you don't have to pray and say, God, you don't love me. If you love me, you give me what you gave to the other person. No. He loves you. He already loved you before you knew him. He will keep loving you. But then your understanding is your problem, not the love of God. Okay? Alright, so sit down. 
So now I'm going to the next point now, and this is the foundation of that statement. Why is that statement that I made? Why is it so important? If it is God that is doing it, this is the mark, the mark, the mark of it. Okay. Number one is because, everybody say because. Number one, love planned it. Number two, grace brings it. Number three, faith receives it. In this triangle of God's wisdom, the devil can defeat you. Did you get that? Huh? So, you've written that down. Huh? Out of the three, love planned it, grace brings it, faith takes it. So, divide your note. This is heaven. This is the earth. This is God. This is you. Now what I just said now, love planned it, grace takes it, and grace brings it, faith receives it, is only applicable to the children of God. Is that okay? This is God's plan. So love planned it. That's in heaven. Grace brings it. So this love is in the heart of God. Grace, this is the hand of God. You, faith. Is that okay? Praise God. Now don't worry, you know, this particular teaching, the way that God wants me to do it, I will take it in such a way that everybody will understand. Is that okay? And um, if you don't understand anything, you can raise up your hand. Maybe I'll take one or two questions. <laughs> and make it like a classroom. <laughs> but if it's disturbing me enough, I won't, I, won't, I won't allow that. But now follow this teaching. Very simple. Okay. Um, Pastor Lajolo, you come up here. And um, let me have um, four people from the car, two brothers and two sisters. Come up here. Come up. Come up here. Now, those of you stayed, stayed, stayed over there. So take four of these cards now. Is that okay? Huh? Two sisters. Now look at the four of them. Write any blessing you want on each of these cards for them. You don't need to, you don't need to do anything to impress him. Okay. Now, just watch what I'm saying, what I'm doing now. I'm doing a teaching. Is that okay? The reason why if it is God, it can't be bad, it can't be evil, it can't be this or whatever, is because love planned it. That love is in the heart of God. Okay? Good. It's in his heart. The devil can't get in the heart of God. You know that? Huh? And he made a decision... The love of God is different from our own love. You know that? The love of God is a decision that he has made. You are not going to change it. You are not going to influence it. He has decided to love you. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay? For he decided. He made up his mind. There's a love of in spite. You understand? Our own love is the love of because. God's love is the love of in spite. In spite of what and who you are, I will still love you. Thank you.